Have you ever felt overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world? Sometimes we don't realize that we can make a difference. My name is Debbie Van Grieken, and it is my hope to inspire you to take small steps towards social impact. Join us each week as we have conversations with those who have taken simple steps towards living a more sustainable and socially conscious lifestyle. If you want to make social impact, let's start small. Welcome back to the Start Small Podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Van Grieken, and today I'm happy to be joined by Kathy Davis. Kathy is a plant-based lifestyle coach, the CEO of Veg Inspired, and the author of three cookbooks, the 30-minute whole food plant-based cookbook, the super easy plant-based cookbook, and the budget-friendly plant-based diet cookbook. Kathy empowers high-achieving professionals to elevate their energy by adopting healthy living habits so that they can step into their genius and crush their ambitions. Kathy has been eating and creating vegan meals for more than seven years. Over the past two years, she's shifted her daily habits to follow a whole food plant-based lifestyle. She experienced amazing results, renewed energy, a newfound sense of joy, and a healthier mind and body. Kathy's brand, Veg Inspired, is dedicated to providing high-achieving professionals and entrepreneurs with the resources to make a similar transformation. She is eager to guide others on their journey to step into their genius and crush their dreams. Fun fact, Kathy and her husband, John, are living their plant-based dreams while simultaneously traveling the United States in an RV with their cats. They've been to 26 states and 19 national parks so far and have a goal to visit all the U.S. national parks. Please welcome Kathy. Kathy, it's so great to have you here. Thanks, Debbie. I'm excited to be here. Now, I am so excited to get into all of this, but first you have to tell me what is going on. You are driving in an RV across the U.S. So where are you now? Yes, we are in Florida. We're in, oh. we're north of Miami in Florida for the winter because we're recording nice. this in the beginning of December. Um, but yes, we sold our house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania three years ago and we travel in a fifth wheel RV. So we've been all over the United States, all the way down to Texas, all the way up to Montana. And we're just wow. on an adventure. Oh, that's incredible. I was just in Florida a few weeks ago and oh, I was so jealous. I just wanted to stay for the entire winter. I, I can't believe I came back to Canada where it's so cold. <laughs> so now was this something that you had always wanted to do? Is this, is there like an end game in this or is this a, like a new lifestyle change? What are, what's kind of the goal for all of this? So it's a new lifestyle change. I would say, I I wouldn't say that we always wanted to do this. My husband and I always wanted to travel and, you know, the nine to five sticks and bricks, white picket fence, American dream lifestyle doesn't always allow for that. Like you're very much on company time as far as when you can take PTO and what weekends you can have off. And we just found that we were really kind of stuck And we found RV living to be something that intrigued us, you know, tiny, you think of it like as a tiny house on wheels. Mm. And we looked at some of them and found them to be, you know, suitable for what we needed. I mean, we had a big 2,400 square foot house with three bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms, and we hardly used any of it. And so when we really started to look at this downsizing and being more of the minimalist approach, we realized that we we didn't need the space necessarily. We just needed the comforts. So we've got a king bed, a nice big bathroom, a nice big kitchen where we can do all of our cooking and we can take our little home anywhere we want to go. Oh, it just sounds so amazing. And I know so many people are really looking at this as the future. And a lot of younger people too are looking to this. I mean, we kind of have that traditional, you know, big home is a big farmhouse. We had five children and, you know, all, all boys. So we had, you know, this great space for them to grow up and run around and lots of, you know, woods and fields and things like that. But now they're all grown and having families of their own. And 
we still have all this big space. <laughs> so we're in that same position of like, what do we do? Do we downsize? Do we, you know, change? You know, we've talked about maybe creating more of a community here where we have opportunity for people to bring their tiny homes onto our property or their RVs onto the property and looking at that. So one of our previous podcasts, you can go back and check uh, check it out. Those who are listening to this today, uh, we did speak with the someone who was doing that was living in a tiny home and is helping helping other families downsize and get into the tiny home living. Uh, So that's a great episode to kind of listen to as well. But uh, yeah, there's just so much that we can do and things are changing. The the nice thing is that regulations are changing and now we're going to be able to do a little bit more with the property that we do have. So that's exciting to see what happens in the future. Yes, definitely. That's so exciting. And it's so cool to think about how like how our ideas, our little seeds of ideas kind of evolve into something so much, so much bigger and make such a big impact. So mm-hmm. I just love that you're already thinking about ways that you can build some community with the property that you do have. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think it's really nice to see the younger generation you know, and the kids growing up and, you know, kind of questioning the traditional kind of way of doing things, right? We know we were kind of led to, you know, think a certain way, go to university, get a degree, get a corporate job, you know, save for retirement, you know, (laughs) get a big house, have a mortgage and all these things. And, and, you know, it's wonderful to watch my kids and see how some of them are, are changing that that narrative. And I have one son who's a tree planter living up in, in the North and he's same thing. He was living out of a van for a while and, uh, you know, converted a van into a mobile home. And, and so we have a a podcast interview with him too. So yeah, just lots of really cool things seeing that the the younger generation are, are at least trying these new things and, and not just accepting, you know, what kind of narrative we've always grown up with. So I'm excited about that. Definitely. Me too. I am so interested in learning more about your journey into the whole food plant-based diet. We have interviewed doctors on this podcast before um, who who definitely promote this as a, a very healthy way of living. We think it's a great way for sustainability, you know, helping our planet by reducing emissions. But it's hard. (laughs) At least it is for me. I've tried and, you know, I've done it for a long period of time and then I've slipped back and then I've done it again. So I'd love to know what kind of got you in this journey. It's like a loaded question, I think. Um, (laughs) Well, eight years ago, my husband actually read some articles and was like, I think we need to give this plant-based thing a try. And I was extremely resistant, to be honest. Like I know all the benefits I heard about it, but I was really just afraid of giving up the foods that I loved and how we approached it was, let's just go with this eat more plants mindset. Let's really look at just adding more plants to our meals and starting to crowd out the things that may not give us the optimum, you know, the optimum nutrients for our health. And what I found was the more we ate meals made from plants, sauces made from squash and cashews and you know, those familiar foods to me, the more I actually enjoyed it. And I started to feel lighter and cleaner. And, you know, the way that I felt gave me more of a reason to keep eating that way. And so I would say about six months after he kind of introduced the idea, I was really ready to be like, okay, I'll be vegan. But then see, this is the key. And I always like to bring this up. Vegan isn't really healthy, right? We've got amazing vegan products on the market that are really, really awesome but using those as a staple in your diet can really lead to, you know, just additional processed food. And that's what happened to us. Like we loved the vegan lifestyle. We, every time we turn around, there were new products and we found ourselves eating more and more processed food. We were still eating yummy whole foods, lots of salads and greens and grains and vegetables, but we would add the vegan butters and the vegan cheeses. And the next thing you know, you're basically eating the same types of foods, but just with processed foods. And about two years ago, I really stepped back and said, wow, I'm, I'm at my highest weight. I'm, I'm tired. What is going on? Like I'm eating a healthy vegan diet. Well, it wasn't turned out. It wasn't as healthy as I thought it right. thought it was. And I really started to implement more intentional plant-based eating again, going back to the eat more plants mindset mostly unprocessed and really being intentional about the foods that I ate. And it changed my life. 
I'm, I have 10 X my energy. It's given me, you know, stamina and longevity and just the sustained energy throughout the day. And I'm happy eating this way. It's a lot of vegetables, a lot of fresh foods, a lot of foods that you love, potatoes and brown rice and sauces that are really delicious. And when I started to look at the way that I could incorporate those plants into my meals, I started to realize that the more whole foods I ate, I felt even better. And then it was like, I didn't even know I had felt that bad until I started to feel even better. Right. You know, and I love that philosophy because... I think too, when we start thinking about changing our diets, the first thing we think of is I can't have something. And then that kind of sets us up to fail because you want it even more. <laughs> so what I love about what, uh, what you're talking about is really that the more of the, the good plants that you're eating, the less you crave the stuff that's not good for you. So, you know, I always said that my husband would always say to me to don't think about having like, you can't have a chocolate bar. Like every time I'm like, that's it. I got to go on a diet. Got to go on a diet. I can't have chocolate anymore. But like, don't think of it as not having that. You can't have a chocolate bar ever again. Just think of it as like grab a piece of fruit first. And then the more of the stuff you're having, you'll all of a sudden not want that chocolate bar because you're having all this good stuff first. And it's true. It really does work that way. So I find that, you know, every time I'm eating this way, I do feel better. Um, and I don't crave, you know, the meat or anything like that as much. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. Cause I love that your husband gave you similar advice to my husband. Like it's not a never thing, right? It's an intention thing, yes. right? Like intentionally grab some fruit. And I always tell people who love chocolate, get fruit and drizzle a little bit of melted vegan chocolate on it. Like you don't yeah. need to eat the whole chocolate bar or a whole cup of chocolate chips or whatever, but a little drizzle of chocolate on a strawberry is like so decadent and satisfying. Mm -hmm. And it can be so, you know, so satisfying, like I said, satisfying, but it can be so satisfying to enjoy that indulgence and not feel like you're way off track, right? Because it's not yeah. really about it being a diet. It's about it being a way of life, a way of a living. And I think a lot of times people enter into it and they think of it as a short term. And I think if we go in more with this mindset of eating more plants as a lifestyle, you're like, okay, I'm just going to eat more plants. I'm just going to have, right. you know, grains on my salads. I'm going to, and then loading up those foods so that we're not hungry. And then I think intentionally eating and, you know, enjoying what you're eating, taking that time to, you know, look at the presentation of the, the food, you know, chew it, you know, enjoy it, take it slow. I'm really bad for that. I, my husband, <laughs> okay, we have this constant kind of, you know, comments at the, ta at the dinner table because he eats so slow and I eat so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it drives both of us crazy. But, but I think too, it's that intentionality that he's actually, you know, taking the time to enjoy what he's eating. I make fun of him because, you know, I will be halfway through my meal and he's finally got it arranged with all the different spices and sauces and this and that, that he finally has it all exactly the way he wants it. And I'm halfway finished my meal. <laughs> That's how it is in our house too. And I'm always like, are you I'm like, are you still eating over there? Like I was done. My plate's been rinsed and washed. <laughs> but I think that I probably would eat a little bit, maybe not, maybe a little bit less, but also just like really enjoy it and then feel fuller and not be, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes later looking for a dessert or a snack or something. So I think that there is a big piece to that, you know, being intentional with what you're eating. But what I love, um, I love that you've got all these great books, you know, three books and, and these cookbooks, but you've got a coaching program. And I think it's really interesting what you're doing with that. Why don't you share what your program is and what people can expect from your coaching program? Absolutely. Thanks. I, yeah. I, you know, one of the things that I realized when I made the transition is that the support is so key and really having somebody to, you know, hold you accountable. But what I've found over the years of talking to people and working with people and really being in the space is that we all know what to do. We, you know, we, we know what's healthy. There's books out there. 
if it were that easy, we'd all be doing it. And what I found is that by giving people the resources, the systems, the foods, the menus, the meal plans, the recipes, and then the implementation strategies plus mindset, because that's a big key when all of this too is if we don't go in with the right mindset, right back to that intentionality and the focus on what you're adding versus what you're taking away, we really end up kind of off track. And I was a yo-yo dieter. So for me, it was like, this needed to be different. And so my program is really, really about a different approach to the foods, the systems and the implementation and the mindset of eating more plants of really, you know, the whole concept of the Academy is really eat more plants, right? The eat more plants Academy to really bring in this positive side to just plant-based living, or, you know, it may not, you may not want to go fully plant-based. You may simply have a goal to eat more plants and we support that as well. Excellent. Excellent. And so, you know, people are coming to you with this for coaching and and they want to make this transition. What's kind of their big motivator? What are some of the people coming to you with like, what kind of concerns or health concerns are they coming to you with? And what kind of changes are they seeing and how long do you, does it really take before they can start seeing some benefits of this, this lifestyle change? Uh, yes. So I, I work with a lot of people who have both like, like lifestyle goals, weight loss, energy, really having, you know, the stamina to put forth that, that optimum performance, either for business or professional or personal goals, you know, being, you know, being home with kids requires a certain level of energy boardroom executives requires a certain level of energy, entrepreneurship, a certain level of energy. And then if you have to balance all three, you really need that type of type of, you know, this long sustained energy throughout the day. But I also have clients that come to me with medical concerns. I have one client that, um, saw a significant reduction in her blood sugars, blood sugars. And so she had to work, we worked directly with her doctor to get the medications reduced very early on in working together. I would say it was within four to six weeks because once you start to adhere to it and your body starts to learn what to do with the foods that you're, you're feeding it. I mean, there are doctors out there now that are prescribing plant-based way of eating for medical, you know, for medical reasons. And so to be able to provide people with the accountability and the foods and the systems and the implementation strategies really allows them to stick to the plan that's best suited for them based on whatever medical practitioner they're working with or their goal. And I can be that, that support that, you know, cheerleader pulling them along and really coaching them through that process. That's wonderful. Yeah, we do um, have a podcast interview, like I said, with uh, Dr. Reza Kazemi, and he really saw um, a significant reduction in uh, medications that were required for his patients with diabetes, uh, heart-related issues, things like that. So again, when you undertake one of these uh, lifestyle changes, it is important to be uh, talking with your doctor at the same time, because it really can have a dramatic effect on the medications that you're taking. So you can be needing to monitor those levels so that they can sort of slowly start to bring you off or wean you off of those uh, medications. So it's a really good point to, to talk about that. Uh, so, okay. I got to say your books. Awesome. You've got books as well as e books available. Tell me about some of your favorite recipes. What kind of recipes can people expect from these? Are these quick? Are these, you know, complicated? What are we looking at here? Because I think that that's a big stressor is when I have to go into the kitchen and pull together a meal with vegetables. (laughs) What am I doing? Definitely. That's, that's awesome. And I love this question because one of the things we joke about, well, not really joke, but one of the things we toss around over here is, you know, the cookbooks really nail down the big three, the big three objections. So the first book we wrote, I say we, but really it was me and my little RV. And since it's a small space, it felt like we were, you know, it was the two of us, my husband and I, but I wrote the, I wrote, first of all, I wrote the cookbooks in the RV. So, you know, they're simple because I live in a small house. Right. So the first book that I wrote is the 30 minute whole food plant-based cookbook. All the recipes are ready in 30 minutes. I would say that there's a handful of odd ingredients, miso, tahini, uh, 
nutritional yeast that people may not know, soy curls, but for the most part, everything can be found at your regular grocery store. I was just about to say that it's coming really popular now that you can, you know, just go to your regular grocery store. It used to be that you had to kind of look for these like whole food markets and, you know, specialty stores, but really just going down, you know, a certain aisle in the, in the um, regular grocery store and you can find the nutritional yeast and you can get that tahini. It's, it's quite easy now. Yes. And that was really a priority for me because I didn't want people to think they had to go and order some odd ingredient from like Mm -hmm. some weird place that they've never heard of. I really wanted it to be accessible. So the recipes in that book, all in 30 minutes, all made with whole unrefined foods. So there's no processed ingredients. We're using whole flowers. We're using maple syrup and dates and raisins as the sweeteners, really thinking about the, the foods that you can get as close to nature intended. The second book busts the the difficulty level. So these are all super easy meals. And I'd have to say that my favorite part of that book are the one pots, specifically the sheet pan meals. You throw all the ingredients on a sheet pan, you're roasted in the oven. Maybe you, you know, are running around with kids or you're taking the dog for a walk or you're finishing up laundry or whatever. You're kicking your feet up for the 30 minutes while it roasts. And then you come in the kitchen toss it all in a yummy sauce and you just eat it. And it's just so easy and so convenient. Those have become my favorite recipes Mm -hmm. for sure. And then the third book is all about budget, which we all know expense is often a, is often a complaint or something that people, you know, think it might be more expensive, but when they really start to compare the, the costs of like animal products now to some of these more whole food ingredients, beans, beans are really inexpensive, brown rice, potatoes, very inexpensive. And so when you're swapping those and making those the center of your meal can really keep your budget down. So that whole cookbook is based on budget-friendly recipes and they're, they're all easy again, all written in the RV. So I'm not using a lot of crazy gadgets or anything of that nature. I mean, it's just simple old fashioned home cooking. Yeah. And I think, you know, I know for myself and I know a few of my friends have had this issue as well as there's a little bit of intimidation in the kitchen You kind of feel a little intimidated by how, you know, following a recipe and, you know, trying to come up with these meals. But I was recently uh, on vacation in Florida, as I mentioned, and uh, I was with a friend of mine and she is, she loves cooking and she does a lot of work. Um, She actually is a fertility specialist. So she coaches um, couples who are struggling with fertility and and she really looks at the whole food plant-based diet as part of a, one of the ways to increase couples chances of getting pregnant. And so one of the things I loved about um, what Sarah was doing is just taking the ingredients you have on hand and, and that can sometimes make the recipe as well. So you might not necessarily have a recipe to follow, but you've got ingredients and you just start experimenting and throwing things together. And I think that by bringing a little bit of fun into that, you can take that intimidation away. And I know that it started to become a little bit easier for me to start even following recipes and trying these new recipes once I kind of got that fear out of actually cooking and putting things together. I definitely agree. You brought up the like simplicity of just mix and matching ingredients, because sometimes I think we're, you know, you hear all the time, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep. And I'm more about like, slow down, let's meal plan and let's yes. ingredient prep. You have two meals that are going to call for rice. Let's make a big double batch of rice. You have three meals that are going to call for, you know, chopped peppers and onions, chop them all, get them all prepped at once on your day that you have more time. And then on those other days, because you know, cause you planned, you can just quickly grab them from the fridge and saute them up. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And really, you know, we plan everything else. We plan our vacations. We plan our business tasks. If we plan when we're going to cook to certain things and how much time we have to cook, it takes that stress out. And you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm making that fried rice with last night's leftover rice. Oh, that makes perfect sense. And then things just kind of happen much easier. And it takes that intimidation out because you don't feel like you need to be in the kitchen all day on Sunday prepping like a lasagna and chili and 17 different recipes and then feeling overwhelmed that you spent a whole day doing it. Exactly, exactly. And I really love how everything that you're doing is is really steering people into educating themselves about the kinds of food that they're eating as well. 
And I think that that is so important that we start learning like where our food's coming from, how it's being grown, things like that. Like, I think that that's kind of been missing from, you know, our conversations. And I know even for myself, you know, I used to think my mom was, (laughs) I used to think my mom was this great cook until I discovered that she basically was heating up frozen meals. <laughs> she was like the queen of, um, here in Canada was m M&M and meats. Um, no offense to my mom if she's listening, but it really was like an awakening for me of, oh, okay. She's actually just cooking frozen foods and it's not necessarily like it tastes good because it's full of sodium and it's full of sugar. <laughs> so I think making that connection now to how is our food grown? Is it, you know, small scale farmers or is it, you know, non-GMO? How, you know, I love that we're in a rural area. I can go down to the local farmer. Uh, we go to the farmer's market on Saturday and Tuesdays and I can get the apples from the farmer. I can get, you know, the vegetables, the peppers right from directly from the farmer. And I, I can have a relationship if I want with the people actually growing my food. But I think having those conversations are so important and it helps to understand, you know, how we can connect with our food and how that's going into our body and how we absorb it. And, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about that, because I think there is a a real relationship that we have with our food. There's definitely a relationship we have with our food. And, you know, I think what I found too, is we, there's a lot of misinformation, right? We we just don't know. We just don't know where we aren't given the information about where the food comes from. And so we grab it off the store shelves and we don't know the effect. And I've been doing some, some, ex, some additional research, research on the, the effect food has on our energy and productivity. And I was reading an article the other day and it said that productivity based on food, like the food that you eat can be increased up to 25%. And I thought to myself, my gosh, if you work an eight hour day and you can increase your productivity 25%, that's like gaining two hours. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you could get done what you get done in an eight hour day in six hours? So can you buy back that time just by feeding yourself more whole plant foods? And then you start to think about like, when I go, you know, we travel full time. So we're in a lot of different grocery stores. We never, you know, rarely are we at the same grocery store more than a few times because we, we move at least once a month and you start to realize and recognize that there's the same foods at all the stores and they're all processed and by the same companies and they all have the same ingredients, right? Refined flours, which is, can really, really wreak havoc, havoc on our system because it's just, empty calories. There's no nutrients. You know, you're looking at, you know, lots of processed foods have lots of sugar, but if you step back and you think, okay, if I buy the the food, the ingredient, the beans, the whole grains, the whole flours that have been ground directly from, you know, from grains rather than refined, the whole pastas, the vegetables, the organic vegetables, you know, I love when I'm in a grocery store, even a mainstream grocery store. And it says local, you know, this, this food's local. I would much rather pick that Mm -hmm. than maybe an organic one from that's been shipped far away. So I always tell people, you know, obviously if in in an ideal world, we would eat organic right out of our backyard, but that's not always the case. Right. And so look for the food that's, that is in, is intact the best, the best quality that you can see when you're at the grocery store. It may be the local food that they get from the local farm. It may be an organic, it may be frozen, right? Frozen food is picked at its peak and then flash frozen. So a lot of times it it gets all the nutrients in and you can do a lot with frozen foods. You can roast them. You can add them to soups. You can, you know, in some cases you can thaw them or steam them and add them to your salad. So really thinking about ways that you can incorporate food when it's at its peak. And then of course, you know, I, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, you know, right of me not to say, go visit those local farmers, Mm -hmm. go visit the local farm stands, you know, support your local community, maybe look for the community supported agriculture programs where you can get a box of food, you know, throughout the, throughout your, your active growing season. Or if they do, you know, we were in Pennsylvania and they did um, boxes through Christmas that they pulled the foods from their root cellars. And so you would get root vegetables later in the year, apples, potatoes, winter vegetables like kale and 
and Brussels and things that can still grow at those colder temperatures. So really look into that and learn where that food comes from, because, you know, there's nothing that, like you said, being able to get the local apples, there's nothing as good as being able to bite into a local fresh apple right from down the street. Yeah, exactly. I just had one this morning. It was so good. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So tell me what's on the horizon. Is there any future projects that you're working on right now? Uh, so I have a few, uh, usually I host a, a master class, some type of free content workshop, um, every couple of months. So always connect with me. And then, you know, the coaching program is, is a rolling entry. So if you are interested in learning more about that, I'd be happy to, you know, share that. Um, but honestly, I'm just, I'm really active and fun and love to be on social. So I'm always posting there, always fun place to connect. And tell us about this um, Facebook group that you run, because you actually have a group that you can uh, join on with a closed Facebook page. So tell us a little bit about that. I do. I have a Facebook community. It's Veg Inspired Healthy Habits for High Achievers. And it's really a community built on education, inspiration, and support. So I'm in there, I'm active, community managers are active, they're answering your questions, they're commenting. We do a live show every week on some training topic, often submitted by people in the community. So it's really a great place to gather more information, especially if you want to just dip your toe in like the eat more plants, you know, framework or mindset. It's a really great place to find information for that. Wonderful. We're going to make sure we link everything in uh, the show notes for people so they can uh, get a direct link to that page as well. Uh, Your coaching program, you um, do things a little different. You actually stick with the person for a year, I believe, because it's really important for you to uh, have that support for uh, the person because I think we all get a little gung-ho at the beginning. And like I've said, I fall off the wagon probably about six months in. (laughs) And so you actually stay with uh, your clients for about a year. I do. I I love to say that I go through all the seasons of your life and we really help you develop the day-to-day habits so that, you know, this is one of the hardest times of the year for people because the temptation of eating all the things and then the influence of family and friends can be difficult, especially if you're new, you know, like I said, we're recording this in December. So it allows you to go through those seasons with me, with that support, with somebody that you can message. Here's a recipe that my mom wants to make. Can you help me make it vegan? So I can still, you know, participate in this tradition with her, or, you know, they pop into office hours or send me a restaurant menu and say, oh, they're celebrating this. Can you help me to pick something off the menu? And so I really, it's a very hands-on, very, you know, high touch white glove kind of program because it takes that kind of support to make a lifestyle change. But what I tell people is, gosh, if you make this change now and this trend or this information goes mainstream, think about how much further ahead your health's going to be than somebody who waits 10 years to do it. Absolutely. I agree. Oh, and I just think that I'm the type of person I think that just needs that support (laughs) an extra little bit, because again, like I said, I can just fall back into old habits and patterns quite easily. And, you know, I definitely am excited and all gung ho. And then I'm an emotional eater. So as soon as anything happens, I'm like, oh, let me just grab my bag of chips and (laughs) my chocolate bar and I'll just wallow here for a little while. (laughs) <laughs> well, you're not the only one. That is a yeah. that is a very, very common, common thing that I hear all the time. And my clients always say, you have a knack for sliding into my message at exactly the time right. I needed you to slide in there. And I'm like, it's like I have that you know, six cents. <laughs> I just know that you're you've got a, something going on, and I just pop a little send over and you're like, oh yeah, I'll grab a, an apple instead. <laughs> Perfect. Well, as we wrap up here, I'd love um, for you to uh, just answer this last question for us. So we here at Start Small like to give um, small steps for people to make big impacts. So tell us some of the small steps our listeners can take to begin making this transition to a whole food plant-based living. You know, I, I love this question because this is my whole framework, right? Start small, start with what you can control. So I would tell somebody that's interested in making those small steps, start with one meal a day. 
get really good at it. Maybe it's oats or quinoa for breakfast with a non-dairy milk and lots of fruit, like really pack in those nutrients. Maybe you like more of a light lunch or like a loaded, you know, salad for lunch. And instead of trying to do it light, throw in a half of a sweet potato, add in, you know, a couple of boiled red potatoes to really pack in that satiation. So you're not grabbing snacks in the middle of the afternoon. And then I always tell people switch out the things that are the path of least resistance, try a non-dairy coffee creamer. You know, I don't love recommending non-dairy cheeses because I think some they're an acquired taste. And honestly, they're so processed that, you know, it's not really it, but like try try a non-dairy creamer in your coffee, try maple syrup type sweeteners instead of using sugar, um, try vegetable broth instead of, instead of chicken or, or beef broth, you know, think of those little switches that can allow you to make a big impact and changing something as simple as vegetable broth or adding a, an extra vegetable to, you know, your meat, potato and starch or meat, starch and veg meal, like add that th- add extra potato and do a little less meat. Think about the impact on your health, on the environment, which we talked briefly about, and then just on the animals as well. It doesn't matter your why, it doesn't matter if your why is rooted in animals, the environment or your own health or some other reason for eating more plants, but that little bit of a change really starts to build that momentum going forward. And it really ripples out. It's, and it helps so many different things for sure. So I just want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you sitting down with us today and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. Uh, We're going to have all uh, everything linked in the show notes, but if you can just tell us um, the best way to to reach you through your website, what it is um, and what socials you use, and we'll make sure we get that in there for you. Absolutely. So it's veginspired.com. That's my website. It's just simple veg inspired, just as it sounds. And then to access that Facebook group that we were talking about, take it one step further, veginspired.com slash foodies. So that's a really easy one. And then Instagram at veginspired. I am active. I love to be social. I would love to hear from all of you. So definitely connect and, you know, let me know this is where you heard, heard me and I'd happy to share any tips or recipes. I've got loads of them to make this easier for you. Excellent. Well, thanks so much. We look forward to following your journey, checking in on you every now and then seeing where you are in the, uh, in the United States, wishing you safe driving to your next home <laughs> and enjoy your uh, winter time in Florida. And uh, again, just it's been a pleasure and thanks so much. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate it. And thanks to the listeners too. Thank you for listening to Start Small. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and found a small step you can take today. Make sure you share it with a friend. And if you have not done so yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you are enjoying this podcast, consider taking a moment and leaving us an honest review in your Apple podcasting app. So more people can be inspired to take small steps towards social impact.